Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white Drizzt deck as suggested and voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 5-mana 3-3 legendary Elf Ranger with a double strike, and when Drizzt enters the battlefield, it is joined by Guinevar, a 4-1 legendary green cat creature token with Trample. And then whenever any creature dies, if it has power greater than Drizzt's power, put a number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on Drizzt equal to the difference. So there's a few ways we could build a deck around Drizzt. It doesn't have the best token synergy because the token it generates is legendary, so doubling it wouldn't really accomplish much. It also has a little bit of plus one counter synergy, although it's not that easy to necessarily trigger that final ability to get those counters going. So in the end, I settled on building an indestructible deck instead, meaning that we're still a creature deck, but a lot of our creatures can be made indestructible, and that also allows us to play a couple sweepers in the main deck, which makes us better against opposing creature strategies, and then we still have all the benefits of having some creatures in play ourselves. So let's take a look at our first category, which are the indestructible effects. With that one mana, Selfless Savior can be sacrificed to make one of our creatures indestructible until end of turn. Adanto Vanguard can also be made indestructible by paying for life, and the tank says a 3-1. Season Hello Blade we can make indestructible by discarding a card. And then we've got some indestructible gods with Ronas and Okatra the True. Ronas we can enable pretty easily by just playing Drizzt, as the 4-1 token will let Ronas attack and block. Plus, we can also use Ronas's pump ability to maybe give Drizzt plus 2 plus 2 and trample until end of turn, which also plays very nicely with Double Strike. And then Oketra needs at least three other creatures in play before she can attack and block, but uh, Drizzt already has two out of the three necessary, so we just need one additional creature before Oketra can get in there, and then it's a 3-6 with a double strike that can also make additional 1-1 tokens, so that can also help us get those creatures in play. Then a Ranger of Eos isn't indestructible itself, but it can find a couple of 1-drops, including a Selfless Savior, so we still have access to that indestructible ability. And then Toski, Bear of Secrets, a 1-1 that's uncounterable and indestructible, attacks each combat if able, and whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card, so that also plays nicely with Double Strike. And then in the Planeswalker section, we also have a few indestructible effects, with Basri giving a creature a plus 1 plus 1 counter, and then it also gains indestructible until end of turn with the plus 1, so that's another way to potentially make a creature indestructible before casting a sweeper effect to reset the board. And then we also have two Gideons, with a Gideon Blackblade, which turns into an indestructible creature that can give our creatures all sorts of abilities, including indestructible with the plus 1, and Gideon of the Trials also turns into an indestructible 4-4 creature, and then Nissa who shakes the world, just a powerful planeswalker that can generate 3-3 creatures, can ramp us and apply a ton of pressure. Then the next category is the removal section. We already said we have a few sweepers in the deck, so in the non-creature section we have Day of Judgment, Wrath of God, Begin Anew, which is one of the new alchemy cards, destroys all creatures, and then creature cards in our hand perpetually get plus one plus one. A bit of a weird card, but it actually fits perfectly in this strategy. We've got Cleansing Nova, can either destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments, and then Doomscar can also be foretold first. And then we also have Realm Cloaked Giant, which can destroy all non-giant creatures, and then can be played as a 7-7 with Vigilance, which also synergizes nicely with Drizzt, because if the Realm Cloaked dies, then we get to put four counters on Drizzt, which is quite nice. Then we've got a bit more removal with the Giant Killer, can destroy a creature with power 4 or greater, and then a 1-mana creature that can tap something down afterwards. And every removal spell that destroys a creature, as opposed to exiling it, is also more synergistic with Drizzt. We've got Outland Liberator, which can destroy artifacts and enchantments. Same with Reclamation Sage and Knight of Autumn. Then Skyclave Apparition can exile permanents with mana value 4 or less. We've got Kogla that can fight something when it comes into play, potentially destroying artifacts and enchantments as well when it attacks. And then Elish Norm will give all opposing creatures minus 2 minus 2 while pumping our creatures by 2 as well. Then the next category is Ramp, where we've got a ton of non-creature ramp effects to help us get to 5 mana for Drist in the first place. We have Explore and Into the North, which can potentially put extra lands in play, as well as Cultivate and 3 mana, another nice 2 for 1. And then we have a few ramp artifacts like Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, 
Guardian Idol and Mindstone at 2 mana, as well as Key to the Archive at 4 mana, which can also draft a card from the powerful 15 card spellbook. And then finally Mirari's Wake can also potentially double the mana that our lands produce, in addition to giving our creatures plus 1 plus 1. And then in the creature section we also have a bit of ramp, but we don't want to include too many mana accelerants in creature form, because those will eventually get swept up by our sweepers, so better to have the non-creature ramp. But we do have Lanor Elves at 1 mana, as it's just too powerful to ignore, as well as Solemn, which can find a land when it enters, and to draw a card when it dies. Yasharn can find a basic forest and basic planes when it enters the battlefield to put into her hand, and says players cannot pay life or sacrifice no land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities, and then it's also a 4 4 creature, which is pretty big. We have both Augur of Autumn and Oracle of Moldiah, which can help us play lands of the top of our deck, providing card advantage. Augur can potentially play creatures as well if we enable Coven. And then Asper Sentinel, another nice one drop that punishes the opponent for casting non creature spells. Then the next section is removal, spot removal more precisely, with Swords to Plowshares, Blizzard Brawl to go with all the Snowlands in the deck, Fateful Absence can also tag Planeswalkers, Tromoka's Command can initiate a fight and also maybe put a plus one counter on one of our creatures, and Elspeth Conqueror's Death can eventually get back a creature or Planeswalker from our graveyard as well. Some of these exile, but ideally our removal destroys to enable Drizzt. And then the final creature section here is just big beefy creatures. Belt Collector will grow over time, also plays well with Drizzt, as it can potentially pick up two plus one counters at once. Entrapped Adversary, a great mana sink to pump up our team. Scavenging Ooze to deal with graveyards. Questing Beast, great at slaying opposing planeswalkers. We've got Elder Gergroth with a ton of useful abilities. Avabrook Caretaker can potentially put plus one counters on Drizzt, so we have a larger double striking creature, and also very hard for the opponent to deal with. We've got Vorinclex, which can potentially double the counters on our permanents, including our Planeswalkers, while having the counters on opposing permanents. And then Galta as a powerful 12-12 Trampler that we can potentially cast for just double green if we have some more creatures in play. And then if the opponent kills Galta while we control Drist, we could potentially put 9 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And then a 12-12 Double Strike can end the game in a hurry, especially if we can give Drist Trample with maybe a Shadow Spear, giving plus 1 plus 1 Trample and Lifelink as a nice equipment. And equipment in general are good to have in a deck that plays a bunch of sweeper effects, so we only really need one creature in play to then put all those equipment onto to potentially carry us to victory. Blank Blade Reforged, another nice one, only cost 3 mana to equip a legendary creature, giving it plus 1 plus 1 for each land we control. We've got Maze Mind Tome to provide card advantage, Sword of Body and Mind giving protection from blue and from green, as well as plus 2 plus 2, and when it hits the opponent we get to make a wolf token and mill the opponent as well. And finally the Great Henge, another great source of card advantage in any creature deck. And then the mana base also includes some of these dual-faced cards, Emeria's Call and Turn Timber Symbiosis, which can potentially find a creature and put some counters on it. And then the snow-covered basics to go with Blizzard Brawl, as well as Castle Ardenvale and Castle Garenbrig as additional utility lands, and Faceless Haven as our creature land of choice. And then the fetch lands also play well with cards like Augur of Autumn and Oracle of Moldaya to potentially shuffle our deck. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Catilda Green-White Humans deck, and yeah, we definitely have a Keeper here, a hand with a bit of a ramp into a Sweeper. Despite both decks being green-white, they should play out quite differently, and uh, Realm Cloaked wiping the board is hopefully gonna give us the edge. Into the north can grab Faceless Haven as an extra creature land as well. And then Cultivate can fix for double white. So there's Catilda. Just Cultivate here. And don't know if I need more than double whites. More forests are good for Nyssa. Guardian Project, not really what we wanted to see, as opposed to just more creatures. But now I could go for Gideon, so we don't overextend, and then Gideon can also 
start applying a bit of pressure. Could just drop Vorinclex and start beating down. Uh, although it's not like we have a ton of counter synergy, Gideon with double loyalty doesn't make a huge difference. So, interesting spot. I guess we could also Oracle, see what's on top to provide some card advantage. Or uh, simply attack with Faceless Haven and then play Gideon, which seems fine as well. And then next turn our opponent's likely to commit a bunch of creatures to the board. Champion of Lampholds, Triggers Project, Vorinclex also nerfs Champion, reducing the counters it gets to pretty much zero. So yeah, maybe we don't even have to wipe the board and we just start beating down with Vorinclex instead. Ambitious Farmhands, that's fine. So yeah, Gideon can plus after we play Vorinclex to gain extra loyalty. So we can plus Gideon or attack with them. Although then we might risk losing Gideon if we don't plus. So let's attack first. Elishnorn can pump their team. Alright. They might have wanted to tap differently, so they could still pressure Gideon. So now I'm probably forced to wipe the board. So next turn we could play Drizzt, or get Oracle going. Can always equip Gideon with sort of Body Mind, even if the equipment does fall off at the end of turn. Opponent replays Catilda for 4 mana. They've got a ton of cards in hand, thanks to that Guardian project. Bodyguard protects Catilda, in case of a future Sweeper. Alright, Oracle, also good combo with Maze Mind Tome, as we can maybe scry some things to the bottom. So, I think I prefer the card advantage here over the uh, board presence from Drizzt. And we can have both now. And Gideon can keep attacking. Sir Poen's at 8. The protection from green on Sword of Body Mind could also come in handy, potentially prevent the opponent from blocking. So, big turn coming up. Skyclave Apparition. Can maybe exile Oracle or Gideon. Goes for Gideon. That's also a white creature, so can block our equipped creature potentially. If we aspire to win a longer game, we'll have to destroy that Guardian project, and we haven't found one of our answers yet, although there's quite a few in the deck. Otherwise, we'll have to try and sneak in a win with our sword. Our opponent passes with a bunch of mana, so they could maybe activate Katilda. I guess they might be one mana short for that, so keeping up some other instant. 
can use Maze Mind Tomb to maybe scry things to the bottom and uh, play more lands for free. Pelt Collector doesn't seem all that helpful. Could also draw with it. I think I might need my mana here, so we'll scry instead. Guardian Idol coming up. Put a stop on upkeep in case we want to scry before drawing. And then I could play Sword, Equip Sword, we could play Giant. For opponents keeping up instant speed removal, I don't love going for the Sword. There's Bossery we could play as well, make Drist indestructible. And then could still animate Faceless Haven potentially. Or play Sword without equipping. Close call. Play Bonsri, and then, yeah, probably counter on Drists, could also target my Trampling token, and then animate Haven. Yeah, I guess we'll target the token here, since Drist already has a profitable attack. Trust in your abilities. And hope there's no Seldor Vankage. The Fairy's Protection instead. Alright, fair enough. So that saves the opponent as well. Not the end of the world. Now they might end up pressuring Basri, but the more creatures they attack with, the more vulnerable they might be to a sword on their way back. Mantra of the Meek for even more card advantage. Could always draw another Wrath to wipe the board here, but still need a way to eventually end the game as well. And we didn't draw too many of our indestructible creatures. Bossery could maybe set that up as well. Marshal to pump the team, more white creatures. And a Containment Priest, main phased here. Still three mana available, thanks to Catilda. They're quite vulnerable to another Sweeper. As per Sentinel, will cost 2 mana now to resolve a non-creature spell. Skyclave and Bodyguard attack. So we could save Bossery by blocking with Oracle. My game plan at this point might be to draw a Sweeper anyways. And in that case, I do want to save Bossery, it doesn't matter if Oracle dies, and we are fine with uh, this trade, basically. And then, by killing Apparition, we also get a 3-3 token afterwards. So, let's try this. And then I have no use for Guardian Idol, so I'll scry that to the bottom on upkeep, and hope there's a Sweeper waiting for us on top. Just a land. Alright, so now the plan might be sword on my trampler and give it indestructible and see where that leads us. And does Drizzt attack? Probably. Alright, looks like our opponent just took lethal damage, maybe not realizing that our token tramples. It's a bit of an anticlimactic end to this game, but I'll take it. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play, facing Nicol Bolas, the Ravager. So our opponent could have some artifact removal, but otherwise Sword of Body Mind could be quite effective. And the rest of my hand does leave a little bit to be desired, with only two lands, so really need to draw some lands off the top to go with Explorer, and then Tome can maybe help smooth out our draws afterwards. So I'll give it a shot. Alright, so let's explore for now. Drew some lines, that's good. So next turn I could play Tome and draw a card. Put a stop on upkeep in case I want to scry for some reason. And then if we draw land 5, we could play Drizzt, but our opponent is keeping up a potential counterspell. Might see them destroy the Maze Mind Tome. Yep, Prismari commands. Destroys an artifact, makes a treasure. That's too bad. But now if we draw land, we could still go for Drizzt. Alright. That does seem worth it here. And then next turn, could maybe play Sword and Equip. Or try and get Henge in play first. And now they already used one of their artifact removal spells. Nicol Bolas makes me discard. What do we get rid of? Could be Cleansing Nova, since I don't expect to wipe the board anytime soon. And we have other ways of dealing with artifacts and enchantments. Sure. Alrighty, so could play Great Henge, play Signets, or I could play Sword, Equip and Smash, which I kind of like as well here. So let's try that. They can trade for my 4-1 if they want to. Opponent takes the hit, so we get to mill the opponent twice and make two wolf tokens. Now if our opponent does have a sweeper, we might be in a bit of trouble. Also made it easier for them to escape Croxa. I think I still play my land. And then if they make us discard again, can get rid of Signet. And yeah, we'll see if they find an answer to Drizzt. All right, looks like they don't, and on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Heliot Suncrowned life gain deck. So definitely a matchup for drawing a sweeper is going to be important. This hand doesn't have a sweeper, but it could ramp into pretty early Elishnorn, so that could still be worth keeping. Key to the Archive could also find a Day of Judgment, so... That can maybe still help wipe the board earlier. Bodyguard without giving anything indestructible. And then Toski, something we can play before potentially casting a board wipe as well. To maybe block for a turn. All right, so far not too many life gain synergies. And we'll just play a key. And what do we get? Time warp to take an extra turn is always powerful, assuming my key doesn't get destroyed. But it's not like I really want an approach either. Tutor could also be useful to find a sweeper. 
Although I'm kind of liking the idea of time warp, even as kind of a bad explorer. And scavenging ooze can go. So there's Heliod. Opponent hits us for four. And hopefully draw an unsapped land here. Blank Blade instead. Alright, so I could play Solemn, which guarantees Elishnor next turn, or I could Time Warp first, and then maybe draw the land for Elishnor next turn. Seems fine as well. Not a high impact Time Warp, since we don't have any creatures or planeswalkers in play to leverage. And there we go. Play Elishnorn, wipe the opponent's board. And now they'll need removal before they can carry on. And Johnny's welcome, that's fine. And I'll say it will instantly die. I guess it gains a life to put a counter on Heliot, but. Not sure if that's worth it. Maybe their plan is just to eventually get to 5 Devotion without relying on creatures. So Heliod can start attacking. Story Seeker. Alright, this is pretty painful to witness, but our opponent's committed. So just gonna try and end the game in a timely fashion. Playing Drizzt seems reasonable. And then... I can still play Toski or Solemn. And then next turn a Blank Blade Reforged. On Drizzt could be quite powerful. Mall of the Skyclaves. That they can keep. How about a sort of Body and Mind on Drizzt instead? Get to draw twice with Toski, make two 4 4 wolf tokens, and kill the opponent as well. Alright, Elish Norn steals the show, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Sithis, Harvest Sand, Green White Enchantments, and our hand is pretty nice for the matchup if we can hit some untapped lanes because Dromoka's Command and Reclamation Sage both deal with enchantments. So I'll try it. And then a basic off the top would be ideal. Alright, I guess for now farmland tapped. Although maybe I guess I was still better off with Grove, so if we draw another non-basic, this at least comes into play untapped on three. Sadly, have to let the opponent untap with Sithis, which also makes her Dromoka's command, sacrifice an enchantment, less uh, exciting. So really need an untap land for Reclamation Sage now. Alright, so we're still in this. And then Wrath of God, another nice reset button. Hydra's Growth, opponent's going all in. Our land is excellent. So, got a couple options. Dromoka's Command. We could just plus one counter fight, do the two for two trade. That seems medium. We could um, make them sacrifice an enchantment, then they just sacrifice Hydra's Growth. So, I think I'm better off just playing Key to the Archive and Ramping. And then we can deal with Duxo some other way. Lining Bolt, not that useful. So, unclear if I want anything here. Demonic Tutor could, of course, come in handy. Yeah, maybe it's still worth it. And then maybe discard Vorinclex, although 
Foreign Clex is nice too. I think we actually get rid of everything here. And attack for two. Especially if the opponent can destroy my key to the archive. I don't want to be stuck with a card that I cannot cast. Opponent's going all in on Daxos. They might have a way to protect him. But it's going to be a pretty specific answer. As we can uh, Wrath of God here. So we'll attack first. And that worked. And get our Faceless Haven. Even though I'm lacking in the Snowland departments. Sithis resolves. So I could play Oracle and then use Dromokas Gwen to fight Sithis. And that's one way to deal with it. No lands on top. So let's see here. The Dromokas command resolves top to bottom. So there's no way for me to make them sacrifice in search for greatness and fight Sithis because they would just sacrifice Sithis first. So I guess plus one counter and fight is the best I can do. Yeah, if the order of the Dromokas command was slightly different, we maybe could have fought before making them sacrifice, but so be it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Kalia, so Mardu, Angels, Dragons and Demons. So board wipes are going to be important. This hand does not feature any, so let's take a mulligan. This is better. Bit of ramp into a wrath, Mirari's Wake, creature that's indestructible. That's more or less what we want. So turn two could play Guardian Idol or Hello Blade to start applying pressure. Don't really have a 4-drop I absolutely have to ramp into, although now that we picked up another ramp spell, I'm more in favor of ramping. And then we'll go with Into the North. Can either go for my Dual Lands or Faceless Haven. Do I need Faceless Haven? I think I would rather have my Dual Land because it plays well with uh, Mirari's Wake as well. Can maybe enable Castle. And then now we can double spell Guardian Idol and Hallow Blade. So we're off to a nice start. So we could see Kalia or Angel of Eternal Dawn. That actually stops our ramp plan somewhat. So I'm gonna have to Blizzard Brawl first, since we're not allowed to play our 5 drops. Luckily I have 3 snow lanes. And then I can explore or attack with Guardian Idol. Let's explore. And we can still attack with Idol. And then next turn, I can maybe play Drist before Wake, since we don't really need the double mana. So better to play our creature and then Wake can uh, pump up my team. Although opponent could also be playing their own sweepers. Kalia finds Terror and Burning Rune Demon. They'll have to discard to a hand size here if they can't play one drop. Elspeth conquers death, also a nice one. So now 
it's a little bit more tempting to wake, so the next turn I can both Conqueror's Death and play Drizzt. So, close call. I guess we'll wake. Attack. Opponent goes for the trade. At this point, probably discard Wrath of God. Since we should be able to just overpower the opponents. And we've got the spot removal as well. Five mana, could see a Terror of the Peaks. And then if I draw an extra land, I should probably keep it in hand as discard fodder for Hallowblade. Giant Killer also works. So play Drizzts and uh, use Giant Killer. Probably no point in using the Castle's ability. And then there's still going to be enough mana to turn on Guardian Idol. Drist also picks up a counter. Alright, so things are going smoothly. They might have a board wipe, can still save Hallowblade if they do. Get rid of Conqueror's Death. And then we're still getting in for 7 next turn. So yeah, opponent unpacks it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Galta, Primal Hunger, so green Stompy deck. So perfect matchup to find a sweeper. This end would be great against a more controlling strategy with Hallowblade and Sentinel early. I do like Sword, I guess, with protection from green, but missing Ram for Elishnorn and missing a sweeper is making me want a mulligan. Still no sweeper. I think we have to keep digging. All right, I guess we'll settle with this. And then could get rid of maybe Hallowblade. And then turn one Pelt Collector, turn two Signets. Still have swords available. And try and play a turn four Drist. Well, there's our sword again. Seems to be following us around and I'm not complaining. Carrioted can stay in play, I think. So I wouldn't be able to equip the sword just yet. But I'll offer the trade. And then I would like to keep up swords if possible. Chariots resolves. Probably no need to exile the cat token. Does mean we don't get to attack with belt collectors since they can crew chariot defensively. But I want to hang on to swords to exile something bigger, maybe the chariot itself. So if they crew chariot, six, seven... I guess they could already play Galta, but we have a couple answers, and killing a Galta with Drist in play would also be pretty nice. It's going to be a Signet into Galta. Perfect. All according to plan. So now we could equip Swords and Fateful Absence. And that's going to be pretty painful. Even drew our own Galta. It's a very strange game indeed.
And we're just gonna one-shot the opponent with sword here. Could have even left up swords, I suppose. But yeah, protection from green, opponent cannot block wrist, and that's 28 to the face. And make a wolf as well while we're at it. So we can have a quick scan through the opponent's deck. No shortage for answers to artifacts, so we were lucky that they didn't have one for sword. Alright, sweet. So today was definitely the day for sword of body and mind. Don't think I've ever cast this card so many times in the same day. And it certainly got to shine alongside the double strike from Drizzt. So overall this deck is pretty interesting. It kind of wants to play against creature decks so we can leverage our indestructible creatures plus sweepers. Doesn't always line up perfectly, but on the other hand those indestructible creatures are always useful against opposing control strategies which may rely on sweepers to keep the board in check. So our creatures kind of have that built-in protection already which is very useful. So it's a reasonable deck, has lots of individually powerful cards, which is always important in Historic Brawl. So give it a go if you've got the cards for it. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.